Hey everyone, this is BBD and uh, playtesting with Todd today again. And I have a pretty sweet green white uh, splash black deck that I want to play today. So hopefully it works out pretty well. Uh, this is the basic shell of the deck right here. We have uh, Arbor Elf and Avacyn's Pogrom to basically accelerate us into some of the bigger cards in the deck. And uh, we have Call of the Conclave, which is a 3 3 for 2 and works really well with like Tristani which I think is going to be a very good card that people haven't really been talking about much. But uh, Tristani is like one of the big cards in this deck, and what Tristani can do is uh, basically gain you a ton of life from all your creatures. Like a Thrag Tusk is uh, plus 8 life, and if it dies, that's another 3 life. And then you can, like, prolif you can um, not proliferate, but populate the token and gain even more life and make even more guys. So this deck's basically just aiming to... Uh, like swarm the board with big fat creatures and then use like Gavney Township and Vault of the Archangel to finish the game off. So one of the big things about this deck though is Temple Garden and Overgrown Tomb really uh, make the mana pretty sweet and uh, they also work really well with Arbor Elf. So you can use Arbor Elf in conjunction with like Overgrown Tomb to tap for double black if you need to. And we're not really using any black cards in the main deck. We have some in the sideboard. We have Vault of the Archangel. But uh, that kind of interaction is going to make uh, mana bases a lot better and new standard. And the reason I'm playing Vault of the Archangel is because I think in this format, uh, people are going to be playing a lot of aggressive decks like Zombies. I know Todd's playing an aggressive deck this week. And Vault is just a big card to, like, it, it's a little higher impact than Gavney Township immediately. Although Gavney Township's a little bit better in a longer, grindier game. And I definitely want to mix the two because sometimes you'll have both in play and you want two different effects and the ability to choose one or the other. Um, we also have Loxon Smiter, which is, he's just a 4-4 beat stick for uh, three, three mana. And with Arbor Elf and Avacyn's Pilgrim, you can play him as early as t like turn two. And he plays offense and defense very well, so he really fits the, this deck, what this deck wants to do very well. Uh, Borderland Ranger is there to... Uh, helps smooth the deck out a little bit. It's not a flashy card, but uh, it just gives you it mana. It gives you more mana for your bigger spells like Thrag Tusk and Armada Worm, and it also uh, works well with Restoration Angel and works well with Gavin Township and Vault of the Archangel. So it's just kind of an all-purpose card. Uh, Restoration Angel. I don't think Restoration Angel is as great in this deck as it's been in some of the other creature decks, like the Naya deck from last standard format. But it still does work really well with like Borderland Ranger, Thrag Tusk, and Armada Worm. And if nothing else, it's just uh, it, it also works pretty well with uh, Tristani because you gain four life, and then you gain the life of whatever you blink. So if you blink like a Smiter, you gain eight life. So there's a lot of little little things that Restoration Angel does, and it's just a good body on its own. And then Thrag Tusk and Armada Worm are kind of the top end of the deck, and Thrag Tusk is just an awesome value creature. It's good against uh, control decks because it is pretty wrath proof for the most part. Uh, it's good against aggressive decks because it gains you life and clogs up the ground. Uh, just kind of does everything you want it to do. And then Armada Worm is a card that I think is going to see a lot of play. It's very powerful. It's 10 power for, for 6 mana, and it lets you do sweet things like you can populate the worm token with Tristani, you can blink it with Restoration Angel or Cloud Shift to get more value out of it. So I think this card's going to be awesome in the new standard format, so hopefully it works out well. Uh, we also have four O-Rings. Those are just all-purpose removal spells. Um, in a new format, I think a lot of times you don't, you don't know exactly what people are going to be bringing to the table, and it's good to play cards like O-Ring that literally deal with whatever your opponent's doing, and just kind of give you options in that regard. So this is the main deck, and now I'm going to look at the sideboard a bit. All right, so here's our sideboard. We have uh, three copies of Garrick Primal Hunter, and Garrick is going to be very good against like control decks because it just it's a very difficult threat for them to deal with. It just keeps churning out guys. It lets you refuel your hand, and the ultimate, if barring a Wrath effect, usually just ends the game the next turn. So Garrick's very good with that, and he's also good with Tristani because he makes guys for her to populate. And so I actually think that it, it's possible that if Thrag Tusk doesn't end up being necessary in this format, that Garrick might be a good main deck card in this kind of deck as well. Uh, Micaeus the Lunark is a nod to, I think this green-white deck's going to be popular, and it's kind of a nod to that. It's just a mirror-breaking card. Um, it lets your guys quickly outpace the size of theirs, 
because uh, a lot of times in, in a mirror match like this, it leads to a lot of board stalls, and, and Micaeus kind of breaks that open. Sever the Bloodline, I think, is going to be very powerful in the new standard format. Hasn't seen any play really, but uh, up to this point, but I think people are going to be playing a lot of like reanimation kind of decks, and Sever is very good at beating that because it exiles the creature. Uh, it's very good against Lingering Souls, which I think is going to rise again in popularity, and it's good against Zombies because they have a lot of Creatures that are almost impossible to deal with otherwise, like Lot Less Troll. So I think Sever's going to really go up in stock, and it's one of the reasons that I wanted to splash black in this deck. Another reason is Abrupt Decay. And Abrupt Decay, uh, basically I'm not main decking it because I think a deck like Green White like this, a lot of times the problem cards are very big creatures, and Abrupt Decay doesn't hit those. But I think I want it in the sideboard definitely because of any kind of problem enchantments or artifacts that are cheap or um, you know other cheap creatures that I may not have answers to stuff like you know uh, like a blood artist for example is a good example of a card that might be able to beat me if I don't have something like abrupt decay to kill it uh, Golgari charm as well is uh, mostly a wrath proof card uh, it could also be rootbound defenses but I think costing two instead of three is very big so that's mainly the purpose of Golgari Charm, but it also destroys art, uh, enchantments, which could be relevant, and it also uh, gives Neg 1, Neg 1 to creatures, which also can be very relevant. So uh, mostly that's the purpose is to, to avoid Wraths, but it definitely serves more purposes as well. And then Knight of Glory is just because I believe Zombies is going to be the predominant deck coming out of the gates, and you want a way to um, basically stem the bleeding against them and also be an aggressive threat that they can't deal with. So this is a sideboard, and uh, we'll go to the matches soon.